My name is Brian Pincus. I am Executive Vice President at Bob Gale Special Events. We are a, a single source for multi-services for event planning and production. Bob Gale Special Events is an interesting company. It's a, it's a family business. So um, I'm a member of the family. So when I was going to school, I, I figured that I would start working just to make some spending cash. And uh, it wasn't that simple because I got very interested. <laughs> so when I graduated, I came on full time and I never looked back. The company's been around for about 33 years. Yeah, start, I'll tell you more. It, it started out as a, um, as a music and entertainment company. And so it was bands and DJs and string quartets and harpists and magicians and caricaturists and other kinds of entertainment. And then uh, it, it started to snowball into what it is now, which is a full service, single source for multiple services. It, it's a complicated thing to stay on top of everything, but it's sort of like second nature at this point, and we have a lot of systems that have been in place for a long time since the company's been around and we're, we're all very seasoned here. Um, but it actually is probably easier for us in many ways because we actually do own all the services. Like we physically make, you know, when we need a cabana, we, we built a cabana. Um, you know, when we need this linen, we, we have the fabric and then we sew this linen. So it's a little bit like knowing all the little details that go into each little piece, it kind of helps us, well, if you're going to have, you know, a table, you need chairs usually. If you're going to have chairs, you need to have cushions. You know, if you're going to have centerpieces, it would be nice to light the centerpieces. All these different kinds of things, kind of one leads to another. So it's kind of natural at this point. I think a lot of people have tried to make it not look like they're saving money, but also saving money. <laughs> so there's ways of doing that. There are certain flowers and there's certain, you know, ways of, of constructing a centerpiece that will make it look like it was a, a design choice because it's, it could be a striking look, but it can also be inexpensive. And there's ways of going about that. And for us, because florals is a big part of the, of the event, it's gonna make the whole look of the room, uh, depending on the event, but it's really only one piece of the puzzle as well. We can kind of share, you know, in the budget. We don't need the, the florals to be necessarily you know, giant, huge things because that's, we're just a florist. You know, we're trying to achieve the client's goals with them and help them realize what they're envisioning. So if we, you know, make the centerpiece be more reasonable and that can save them money there and then they can kind of put some of the other funds towards the other elements that they're trying to incorporate and get into their event, then it's no problem for us. We just, as long as they're happy and as long as we're not, you know, giving things away for free. <laughs> Tips for a successful event can be different from person to person and what their priorities are. Um, if someone walks in, like I met with someone yesterday and they came in and they said, you know, I, I want everything to be beautiful, but I want everyone to walk away saying, I had a great time. So to me, automatically, I think we need to do, you know, the right band or the right DJ or whatever the right music is going to be because you know, we want to set everything up and make it so it's looking good. We want to make sure that the food is not going to be, you know, tasting bad. But when they, you know, walk away, saying I danced and all I remember is just being on the floor. I would say having alcohol <laughs> and having good music in that kind of a scenario, you know, is are higher on the list than maybe, um, you know, a, a napkin band. If we can save money on the napkin bands and put some of that money towards the, the band, the dance band, then that's gonna be better. So case by case every time though. Well, I, I think in, in many cases, it just depends on their, their past, you know, and they'll walk in saying, if everyone has the best meal of their life, that's going to be a successful event. So we want to make sure that we make sure that can happen. Some people walk in and they say that when the crowd or the, the guests walk into the room and they feel like they're transformed into a different environment, then the battle is already won, which in many cases is true. Like you're, people will probably dance more in a situation like that as well. And that will feed into, I'm going to walk away saying I had a great time. But as soon as they get in the door and they say, Oh my God, not necessarily because it's gaudy and so big, but because it's so tasteful and it's just so, you walk into a room that maybe you feel like you've seen before or it's in a ballroom that might otherwise be a generic square room, but there's so many creative little, you know, accents that we may have done that makes it feel like they've been transported somewhere else, then, you know, I feel like it already sets the tone. There's a couple of things that I think are, I would say there's three main things that are the most rewarding to me in, in this job. One is that we do so many events that on a regular basis, because of the hard work that we do, we have people, you know, almost every day, 
depending on what events we're doing, will say thank you so much for the hard work that you did in, that you put into this, and thank you so much for making you know making me happy basically. So getting emails and phone calls with positive reinforcement on a regular basis, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> so that's a, a rewarding thing. There's another thing which I think is a pretty unique thing in in our business especially, where we sort of provide like a nice. I don't know what the word is, maybe like a vehicle for the talent that artists, musicians, florists, designers, seamstresses, so on, all have to offer. And then we have people that have the needs to you know, have them at their events. And we can kind of line them up and give them you know, someone who wants to express themselves like this and someone who needs that. And we kind of are the way that they can connect and everyone, everyone wins. So it's providing work and it's providing a service where they both may not have other met each other. So I think that's a very rewarding thing also. So that's a little bit more esoteric in my mind, I don't know. Um, and then, you know, for me personally as well, um, you know, I am a musician and so, you know, when I, I work in one of our dance bands um, and when I'm at an event and when everyone is, you know, sort of like being in touch with a live audience and there's a rapport there when we're playing a song, it's just the right song at the right time and everyone is having a great time, and, you know, and maybe you can tell that I like <laughs> I like music. So when I see people dancing at a party and, you know, it's like forgetting their troubles for a few minutes, I think that that's a rewarding thing as well. It's actually an easy question to answer because um, I, I don't know of another company that legitimately provides the different services that we provide in one spot legitimately. We don't subcontract any of the services that we provide and I've never heard of another company that provides bands and florals, and makes their own linens, and makes their own props, and all the other things, the pipe and drape, and lighting, and everything like that, in one spot. I, you know, maybe there's a florist who works with a lighting company, or maybe there's a, you know, a coordinator who knows many different vendors, but they don't actually, it's like going direct to the source for all the different services. Our, our company is, you know, works as an a la carte, sort of a company. So people call up and they just book 200 chairs and that's the whole event. They'll just book a dance band or just a, a solo piano player who's going to play background music while everyone's having a nice dinner. Um, or we're just doing you know 15 centerpieces and that's it. Of course we do tons of events where we do all those different pieces but um, and it's like the whole ball of wax from zero to a hundred. Um, but you know, when we're doing just a chair event, and not, those are great, that's like bread and butter for us, we love those. Um, you know, knowing all the little ins and outs that can go right or wrong with a chair event as a rental company for chairs, you know, that, that's significant. You know, there's a, I can tell you a, a list a mile long of little things that you wanna make sure are gonna happen just right, that if they don't, then it's not good service, or the chairs won't look as good, or the cushions will be dirty, or who knows, there's lots of little things, or is there time to load them in, time to load them out, so on and so forth. Um, so I think just having the experience of been going through all of these different individual services, it gives you a different insight because you know we know what that's actually going to take to set them all up, you know, and that's just chairs, you know. And, and when people are starting with us new and they're becoming what we call operators, they'll become like in our operations department, you know, we'll have them, you know, start out by learning on some of the smaller individual services because it starts to build character, <laughs> starts to give them a, a, the experience that they need so that they can eventually, you know, graduate to the whole ball of wax. But that takes time, of course. Uh, that's another thing about the event planning business, which is not for everyone, where you'll start to go down one task and start to accomplish, you know, whatever preparations you need for one event, but meanwhile you're working on that, five more calls are coming in for five new events all at once. So one minute we're talking about uh, one scenario where she wants to hang fabric from her ceiling and the next person calls and they want to figure out if we can play Latin music <laughs> and the next person's calling up and saying, you know, we want to rent a... Uh, you know, an eight foot tiki mask. And so it's like, you know, very much a unique and exciting, different and challenging experience. It really does depend on their goals. Um, if we're doing an intimate event for 30 people, or we're doing a, a, an event of 600 people, which are, you know, all the extremes happen at all times. Um, if they are doing a, you know, a 30 person event, 
Maybe they really just want to have a quiet dinner with some background music and maybe they'll play a first dance and or perform a first dance. Um, people don't usually want to perform the first dance, they usually just want to get through it. But some people do choreography, of course. Um, anyway, I digress. The, um, so whether it's just a, you know, something very intimate and they just want it to be maybe you know, long tables and make it feel like they're all you know, part of one experience as opposed to you know, multiple tables throughout the room. Or maybe they're you know, very contemporary and they want to do um, you know, clean lines and, and squares and rectangles everywhere and have it be um, whatever that is in their mind. We want to make sure that we can give them that. And the beautiful thing is, of course, we have all those things in our inventory, so it's a matter of knowing what is possible and feasible and what might make it the most conducive. Sometimes people will give us, you know, uh, conflicting requests. They'll say, I want to do clean lines, but I want to have, you know, maybe a centerpiece that is cascading and they don't necessarily know that they're conflicting in what they're asking. It doesn't mean that they can't happen and we can't massage it so that they look good together, but, you know, we'll try and help guide people to make that you know, as smooth as it can be.